What's up everybody? Vlog episode two. So we just picked up the trailer. Now we're heading to the storage unit to go grab the carts and head out to the track for some Sunday practice. Um, man, let me tell you, this weekend has been an eventful one. Uh, I had to take my mom to California. We did a quick one day trip because I didn't want to miss out on his practice. So a good 12 hour round trip. Uh, from Saturday morning, we got home about one in the morning. But in that trip, we decided, you know what? We're gonna take our puppy with us. We're again uh, fully vaccinated, so no issues there. He's uh, 13 weeks now. And I wanted to take the boys and our puppy to the beach. We stopped at Huntington Beach and <clears throat> had a good time. We, the boys love the beach. We, I grew up in Huntington Beach. It's where I learned how to bodyboard. It's where I learned how to surf. Spent a lot of my childhood going to Huntington Beach, ditching school. Don't ever ditch school, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Alright. You do good at school, right? Yes. Yeah? You know, when I was a kid, I was reckless. I'll admit that, you know, and I don't want that for my kids. You, know, you live and you learn. So, we ended up stopping at, you know, Huntington Beach for a couple hours. I figured maybe I'll get some rest. We brought a little pop-up um, sunshade type deal. And it didn't work out too well. You know, I can't go to the beach to sleep. I, I always have to be in the water. So, I decided to take that moment and teach the little guy how to body surf you know and the cool thing between body surfing and racing lo206 motors these four strokes is just like a wave momentum is generated kind of similar to the four stroke engine you you get this momentum you know he needs to learn how to carry that momentum and so teaching them how the currents work, teaching them when the water breaks, when to start kicking, paddling, pushing yourself forward, kind of similar to that on the racetrack. You know, once you get going, if you stop, like him putting his hand in the sand, it slows him down, it stops him. And that's similar to letting off of the gas on his cart. So I'm like, hey, Keep your hand straight, point it forward, point it to where you want to go, lay as flat as possible, you know. And in some of the videos, um, you guys don't see it because you get in the point of view, but on back straightaways, he's tucked in behind his steering wheel. And that's, you know, not him laying flat, but it's him generating, you know, carrying that momentum you know, breaking up that wind, getting behind it so he's not a parachute, you know. So I decided to use that moment at the beast to, to teach him a little bit about uh, momentum. And did you feel that you learned a little bit about that mm -hmm. this weekend? Yes. Did you have fun? Yes. Yeah, what was your favorite part about the beast, dude? Body surfing. Body surfing? You want to show them your video? about yes. you body safety and trying to learn and eating sand did you did you drink a lot of water only a little only a little uh -huh. you look like you're about to throw up huh yeah did you watch dad body surf uh -huh. all right let me tell you i don't know if i'm gonna post that video if you guys comment i'll post a video of me body surfing but uh you know my beach body isn't what it was like back when i was a teenager you know i picked up a little bit of weight so I hope you guys take from my little analogy of the wave and carrying that momentum. But we did have an overall good one day trip. Um, I was exhausted, I was tired. Um, originally, I was gonna switch with my wife and do back and forth driving, but um, I ended up just driving and, and kept going because we kept the puppy with us up front. We just trying to get them a little bit more comfortable with traveling with the dog so i decided to stay in the driver's seat and push forward and we made it home about 1 a.m we did stop and get some good food um 
Aiden, did you like the pizza that you tried? Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, my son is pretty picky. He only eats a certain amount of food, chicken nuggets from McDonald's, pizza from certain pizza locations, and it has to be cheese. Um, and then homemade cheese quesadilla that, you know, I have to make. And it's a special tortilla um, from Tortilla Land. So Tortilla Land, if you hear me, please restock the stores don't go out of business because it's the only tortillas he eats it's the uncooked tortillas if you guys don't know um lately the last couple of stores that we buy the tortillas from uh they've been out of stock uh so we've been having to travel pretty far to go get some tortillas for him and i would have to buy at least two three weeks supplies of tortillas and keep it in the freezer so again tortilla land if you hear this <laughs> please help us out restock you know I'll pay whatever amount it is because that's the only thing he really eats. But we were fortunate enough that we did find a cool spot in Huntington Beach. And it's really cool because they're pet friendly. And all the people there loved the, um, our little dog. And they fed him. They pet came him. up to pet him. How many times did people come up to pet, pet him? Like, you were counting. Eight times. Eight times. Eight, eight different people came up, said how cute he was. Um, he kept counting. He was all excited, you know, and we were pretty happy that he did pretty good too. We wanted him to bond. He met his cousin, um, my cousin's dog, and we were afraid he wasn't going to do well with the dog, um, but he did great. They sniffed each other. They, <laughs> they ran around, and cool thing to know too is we've never really had our dog on the leash just because he's so young. And he did a great job with with his leash, staying still, um, and he pooped and peed while he was on the leash outside. It was pretty cool. So um, let's get to the track. All right. So um, within the next couple of blogs, or I'm sorry, vlogs, and I'll say I'll start with this one. We're going to start answering some TikTok questions. Now, if you're just solely on YouTube and you don't know, we um, are currently 7,200 uh, followers strong on TikTok. Uh, it's kind of where we got started. It's kind of how we ended up creating the YouTube. Um, and going from there, a lot of people are asking us to post like full length clips of him either racing or practicing. So, you know, I was pretty hesitant at first, but here we are. Um, so, within the next couple of episodes, starting with this one, I'll answer some uh, questions that I get on various platforms, TikTok, Instagram, uh, and YouTube Shorts. Now, if you have any questions for us, drop it in the comment. One other question is, you want to get into karting, but you don't know how or where. So, um, and I get this question a lot. One of the biggest things is, is going to Google. Um, for me, I asked around because um, we were at the racetrack when, and so with my racing, um, Time Attack, High Performance Drivers Education, HPDE, um, I go and take photos at the, at the racetracks and um, then I'll get in and I'll do my, my driving. And my son would take my camera, he would, you know, watch me, he would snap photos. And he's always asking, one of the things he was always asking is, Dad, can I go with you in the car? Um, he has to be at least 16 years old. So he can't, you know, what can a seven-year-old do? And he's been around this since he was six. So people at the track were like, well, dude, why don't you get him into karting, you know? And I'm like, what's karting, you know? Didn't really know much about it. Um, I did have a small stint at Speed Zone in California when I was a teenager where I worked a couple months. My very first job was at Speed Zone, um, aside from the family business. But yeah, I really didn't know much into it. I didn't know it was a competitive thing. I didn't know it was a competition. Um, and so we looked into it. A lot of people suggested, um, and a good buddy of mine, Porter, uh, shout out to him. He got us where we are today as far as karting goes. Um, and I miss his Porter. You know, he works at the track. I take a couple photos of him. He has a really nice Integra. Um, 
and he said what he does is he goes to Scottsdale there's a track there uh, one of the rental tracks and take him there see if he will like it and go you know go from there well we did we took his advice we went to this track and let me tell you kids don't love man right yeah. you still remember that track dude <laughs> what, was so, what was fun about that track? Going fast. Going fast. The line. You followed the line. It had the map that showed you the line, right? It's kind of where you learned. Um, he did really good there. He, uh, I think, what, two races in, right? Two sessions in, you, what, you got first place, wasn't it? Yeah. And all those kids, you had first place. Uh -huh. You avoided all those wrecks, right? Uh -huh. And then, they got kind of, we did it three times, we did three full separate sessions, uh, sessions. We, uh, we ended up paying for like their highest membership thinking we were going to be there for a while, but we only ended up doing three sessions only because, um, you know, I didn't want him to get discouraged. You know, he had a lot of kids that came in and were bumping each other, making people crash, and, and this kid who wants to go faster with everything. <laughs> Am I right? Was it slow? Uh, yeah. So, I told him, I was like, well, you know what? If you get first place on your next one, and you put down a time where they allow you to advance to adults, I'll buy you a car. And, of course, in that third session he did. So, here we are. You know, not only one cart in, we got two carts now. Um, three technically because we got our little guy because he wants to race too. We got him a kid cart. So now I got two little racers on my hands. Um, so back to the question. You want to get into racing? Google. Type in karting near me. Go karting. You're going to find a lot of rentals. Now nothing's wrong with rentals. That's where a lot of people get their starts. Lewis Hamilton got his start in rentals. Um, I know rentals is big in the UK, so there's nothing wrong with it. You're going to get a lot of people that are going to, you know, shame you because you're, you're renting cards. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it. At the end of the day, you know, you're paying, you're getting the experience, and you're learning your line. Learning your line, learning how to drive. You get a steering wheel in your hand, just like how I'm doing it. That's all that matters. Seat time is all that matters. You don't need to be going 65 miles per hour every possible second. You don't need that. What you do need is to be sitting in your seat, steering wheel in your hand, and driving. Drive. I don't care if you don't know your line right off the bat. Know the track. Learn the track. Drive the track. That's where you're going to get better at the end of the day. And this is why I tell people, when you're trying to get into karting, you don't go out and buy the most expensive equipment. We bought a used kart for him because what if he doesn't like it? He's a young kid. He went from baseball to karting. I taught him some football, taught him basketball, taught him, you know, he plays a little bit of soccer, right? Mm -hmm. At school. At school. But you ultimately love what? Karting. Karting. You know, and... For me, I'm not gonna force him to do something. Baseball has always been my thing. I love baseball. He's phenomenal in baseball, but he's also doing extremely well. He's phenomenal in racing. He's still young. He's only seven, but he's still he's a big seven year old. He'll be eight next month. But he's you know six months into this and he's learning his line. He's learning the pedals, the feel understanding the motor um in the next couple episodes i'll probably get more into stem and talking about the different categories in stem and how stem applies to racing and these younger generations at school you know getting into science this kid came up to me was it on friday or thursday and you told me you love what well, no, what, um, science, right? Oh, yeah. You're telling, you're talking to me all about science, uh -huh. you know. And the, my first response is great. He's gonna be six six, you know, and I'm hoping he can carry that mission on and becoming the, 
a race car driver. But there's more to just than just being a race car driver, mm -hmm. right? What is, I always tell you to be a what engineer, right? Yeah. You can always be an engineer. You know, build the race car, learn the technology in racing, getting involved in all the technical, logical aspects of racing. You know, design, get into designing, AutoCAD. There's so much you can do in the world of racing, motorsports. But the best tool you're ever gonna have is Google. Google is gonna be your best friend. Type in karting and there's gonna be a vast information out there. We're gonna revamp our website here to give you guys that information um, and hopefully provide you guys with everything you need to get into karting. Um, I'll have to make an episode about finances when it comes to that point. Um, and I'll keep it short with the finances right now. And you're gonna need to set aside, you know, a few hundred bucks a month to fund your carding. You know, you have your monthly expenses such as tires, fuel. All right, I gotta input my. Um, depending on the track that you're at, you know, California has a couple tracks, Arizona has two tracks, but it all depends, you know, on fees, your membership. Do you get the basic membership where you got to pay $15 a practice? And in our case, it's 20 because I have to buy his race pass and then I have to buy my, um, grid pass. So that way I can stand in the grid and walk around in the danger zone. So you do have those monthly expenses then you also get your your i guess you could call it your yearly expense where you know you have to rebuild the motor and so on and so forth you know and upgrades um so i will we'll talk about that in the next vlog um finances so make sure you subscribe to that um and comment what you want to know about finances whoo all right i'm back we just loaded up the trailer um and make sure i brought the tires this time so he's got some fresh tires so let's go on to the next portion of getting into karting you're going to need to acquire gear most important thing with getting into gear and everything else in between is finding your local kart shop make sure you go to your local kart shop here in phoenix we have innovative karting curtis so make sure you visit your local kart shop they'll have plenty of information for you um, especially with obtaining a cart you want to buy a cart that a shop locally is going to have all the parts for you if you buy a cart that uh, doesn't have a supportive shop near you you have to buy all your par parts online a lot of people prefer that i like to walk into a brick and mortar and have a conversation you know get to know the people and i personally think that's a more enjoyable experience but i know there's a lot of introverts um, I used to be one But get to know the people get to know the shop get to know everybody locally, but you'll get all your information at these carding shops um, And parts are gonna be readily available compared to that if you have to buy online, you know in our case Tony cart axles we have a Tony cart, you know um, Having to get certain parts brakes tie rods um, steering columns um, and I'll go into more in depth of what you'll need in case you do get into a wreck out in the track your kid gets into a wreck out in the track um, the most common things that go bad on a cart as far as when a wreck happens um, we'll break that more in depth but having to buy it online waiting for a week or two for it to get there I mean you lose out on time you lose out so you, you know a lot of things and a lot of people will do is buy extra parts we bought extra um, so that way next time it happens, boom, we can change it out 10, 15 minutes in between sessions and he's back out on the track. We don't have to go home. He doesn't end his day. He's not sad. He's not crying. So find a local shop. That's the next thing you're going to do is find a local shop. Um, 
the next step again is getting gear helmet neck brace and i'll make a, another vlog on that what you're gonna need your safety equipment his suit you do need shoes he's using vans you can get away with vans depending on the location what track you're at um <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i was told make it the most authentic authentic video less cuts so there's a sneeze for you <laughs> um but racing shoes you want to get some racing shoes the thinner soles you get a better feel of the pedal we don't have racing shoes just yet we should be getting some soon um and i'll make a video on that i can't wait to get the racing shoes on there for him uh he's been asking we do need to upgrade his helmet i highly 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 recommend getting not the cheapest getting the best equipment for your kid possible um, we're looking at getting an Arai helmet, but we have been looking at some bells that, um, that are specific to karting. Um, we did have a kid who got into a pretty serious wreck um, a couple weeks ago, and the helmet saved his life. Um, and helmets do. They, they Helmets save lives. So <clears throat> we want to make sure that he has the best possible equipment. So we will be upgrading his equipment here along with our youngest son getting him the best possible equipment and that all ties to money making sure that you have the funds set aside to cover these expenses so again i really do hope you guys enjoy this video if you want to know more comment let me know so that way i can answer some more questions and get a little bit more in depth um we are on our way to the track right now we are going to go over his line see how his lines improved right now he's running about 50 second times around the track we want to get that down to 48 our goal today is 49 so wish us luck everybody so got a good couple of sessions in today we came out to get a 49 and we ended up leaving with a 47.13 some of the issues we ran into today and that helped us um, get to the 47 was this carburetor so that's the issue we ran into first was the carburetor we made some quick adjustments and we got to his rpm range which was about 4,500 is what we were looking at. The second issue we're running into is now his brake pads are running and it's slowing him down. We ended up marking the axles to see if maybe the axle is shifting, but axle didn't shift. It looks like it's the brake rotor itself. The pads are rubbing and it's what's slowing him down. So off to the shop, we're gonna break it down, his caliper, rebuild the caliper and go from there. Hopefully that worked. We're, we're thinking his pads are sticking um 
So again, overall, great day. Uh, got some big, exciting news to share with you guys in the upcoming weeks. So stay tuned for that if you like the content. Um, and you think I'm doing a great job, you like seeing my face, you like seeing my son out there on the track. Uh, I think he's running up now. There he is. Um, hit that subscribe button. Comment. Let me know. Until next week. See you guys.